three minutes remaining. Ladies and gents, my name is Xander, aka Diaside, and in this video, we're going to discuss and review this oh so sexy and sleek and might I add, gorgeous looking sidearm called the Breach Light, and I really find out as to whether or not this thing is the best two bursting sidearm in the entire game, at least when it comes to my cup of tea, and that is PvP. Now some of you out there might be asking yourselves the question, well this sounds great Xander, but how exactly are we going to do this? That my friends is a phenomenal question. And the way in which we're going to do so is by looking at the weapon's TTK stats, its base stats, the perk synergy that I might be able to have between this perk and that perk, its recoil direction, its range, its overall effectiveness in PvP, and lastly, some comparisons between other two bursting sidearms. Now before we go any further, you guys have got to know how to get your hands on this beauty. And the way in which you do so is by number one, going to the Tangled Shore and upgrading that Sundial. I think that you have to rank up the Sundial to either rank 5 or rank 7, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but you do so by turning in those fractal line. And as soon as that happens, you then have the option to then get some bounties, aka time loss weapon bounties, and thus complete those to get the breach light. Once you're doing that, you can then complete sundial runs via the sundial itself, and then at the end of that run, you'll then be able to pick up a couple more breach lights, and hopefully if RNG is on your side, you're gonna get that god roll that you guys are seeking. As to what that role might be, well to find that out, the only thing left to do is just to simply sit back, relax, grab some Skittles, and eviscer that notification button, and let's jump right into the video. I'm sure that many of you are curious as to what kind of role that I happen to have on this beauty, and so the very first thing that I want to do is I want to show you guys the exact god roll that I've got, and explain as to why that is. And you guys can see that roll right there on screen. It's got multi-kill clip, demolitionist, drop mag, extended barrel, is an aggressive burst weapon, has a handling masterwork, and a counterbalance mod. Right off the bat, you know that multi-kill clip is going to make this thing's lethality go skyrocketing through the roof and it can do so very, very effectively. And we'll find out as to exactly how much in just a few seconds. But what I also want you to note is that with drop mag, that's then going to complement it beautifully as it's going to then increase that weapon's lethality that much faster on that second kill via having the incredibly fast reload speed that drop mag gives it. Now as you're going from guardian to guardian to guardian and annihilating, decimating, and eradicating every single one of those guardians in your path, you're then going to also proc Demolitionist, and that's fantastic because as soon as you get a kill, you're then going to get more grenade energy, and might I add, that's excellent especially for some builds, which you can definitely see in the very near future. Lastly, we then got Extended Barrel and the Counterbalance mod. The reason why I like to have these two things together is because Extended Barrel is also going to increase the weapon's range, but more importantly than this, it's giving it that bump in recoil control, and coupled with that Counterbalance mod, its recoil is then going to be at 100 out of 100. If you were to ask me, this is absolutely pivotal to have on this type of sidearm, and that's because this recoil direction is just absolutely stupid and terrible and despicable in so many levels, and you'll definitely see the proof of this later in the video, but for now, what I want to focus on is this weapon's lethality. To find this out, you realize just the same way that I did, that this thing's then dealing 45 per crit and 33 per body. Looking at the weapon's optimal time to kill first, it's then going to require 3 crits and 2 bodies to then associate to a 0.73 second optimal time to kill, but then looking at nothing but body shots and body shots alone, it's then going to take 6 body shots, which is then going to correlate to a 0.83 second body shot TTK. Just so that we're all on the same page, here's everything that I've just said right there on screen. And the thing that I want you to note about this is that these computations were done in a frame by frame analysis with a guardian at 8 resilience or tier 8 resilience, aka 196 points of health. At first glance, I was like, no, that can't be right, that's way too long for an optimal time to kill and way too short for a body shot TTK. But might I add, little fun fact, is that this one right here has the fastest body shot time to kill of any other sidearm, however, it's got the longest optimal time to kill, and that is despicable. The good news here is that no matter how that you look at this, it's still going to take 3 bursts to still get those optimal and body shot TTK respectively. But we got some even better news, and that's because this thing's optimal time to kill can actually be increased even more so via multi-kill clip. Unfortunately, I never got a roll that had Rampage, so I wasn't actually able to do those TTK computations. But as far as multi-kill clip goes, we have some luck. Because as I'm sure that you've already noticed by now, that when you happen to have multi-kill clip times 1 active, 
It's then dealing 53 per crit and 38 per body. On the moderate chance that you might get 2 kills and then reload, you're then going to proc multi-kill clip times 2. And when this is the case, it's then going to do 60 per crit and 43 per body. No matter which kind of one of those things that you have proc'd, multi-kill clip times 1 or multi-kill clip times 2, they're still going to have the same optimal time to kill at 0.47 seconds. But the main difference here is that one's going to have a slight leniency factor towards the other, and that you're going to need 3 crits in one body for multi-kill clip times 2, and 2 crits in 2 bodies for multi-kill clip times 2. Just so that we can have a side-by-side -side comparison analysis of all this stuff, what I want to do is put this fantastic chart right there on screen. And as I said from before, these computations were once again done in a frame-by-frame -frame analysis with a Guardian at 8 Resilience or Tier 8 Resilience, aka 196 points of health. And seeing all this data, I just want to kind of put this into perspective for you, because with a Last Hope and also a Last Dance or anything in the next, next game R-Type, they have an optimal time to kill at 0.5 seconds and they don't need any type of damage buff to actually get that. The Breach Light and other two bursting sidearms simply can't do that unless they happen to have a damage buff of some kind. And in this case, that's multi-kill clip, but that might be just regular kill clip or it might be Rampage or something else entirely different like, say, Swashbuckler. Furthermore, I also want you to remember that a recluse with Master of Arms proc has the exact same optimal kill as the Breach Light with multi-kill clip times 1 or multi-kill clip times 2. And this means to you that it's going to be a fantastic replacement for the recluse in PvP. Whether this is good or bad, well, my friends, that's up to you, and so I'll let you decide that. But the very next thing that we have to understand about this weapon is its overall shot rhythm. And the best way that we can see this is by looking at the weapon's base stats. As you can see from right there on screen, the weapon's range stat is at 63, which is pretty darn freaking good. Its stability stat is detestable at 43. Its reload stat's even worse, unless you happen to have drop mag, and in this case, it's at 61. But then the aim assistance is at 82, which is awesome, and its recoil direction is at 82. But with extended barrel and a counterbalance mod, it's then going to cap out at 100. The key principles as to why I want this breach light to have a recoil direction that's going to max out at 100 is because I want to be more predictable and thus more consistent in the process. Reflecting upon this with the weapon's aim assistance, we're then going to have a potential to have a very good shot rhythm. But unfortunately, the weapon's stability stat is just detestable at 43 out of 100, and so in that sense, that's when you're going to really have to fight the weapon to make sure that you're still landing those crits. Despite that, the weapon's range stat is still at 63 I-100, and this is then going to allow you to hit more of those crits more frequently because the bullet magnetism is going to be that much higher. And so before we can actually see this, we got to understand the weapon's effective optimal range. By going to a private match and pulling out that Darcy, I'm measuring 60 meters, and the breach light is then doing 45 per crit as we would expect. Going back only a sliver to one more meter, aka 17 meters, the breach light then does 44 per crit. And this then means to you that the particular breach light that I happen to have has an optimal effective range at 16 meters. Remember, this is the role that I happen to have in the test for it. And so you might happen to have a different role that's going to have a little bit better range or worse range. But even so, this is then going to be a very good guesstimation as to how much effective range that yours might have too. Now, when we look at range, many of you know just the same way that I do that you can't just simply look at damage falloff and the optimal effective range as the only factor here as once again I refer to bullet magnetism, as bullet magnetism is going to be significantly affected by this weapon's range stat. To see this, we're once again going directly back into those private matches, testing out that Darcy for 10 meters, and then with the breach light, we can then see that it has moderate bullet magnetism on the right side of the head, but on the top side of the head, it's not too shabby either, as I can still land shots while aiming within the health bar. Going back to 15 meters, here we see a mediocre situation that can be either classified as good or bad, and let me explain. On the right side of the head, I was never able to land crits, but even so, I could land shots far in excess of what should be typical for a hitbox. Inversely to this is the top side of the head, and here I was able to land crits while doing so in the health bar, yet not exceeding it. Upon first inspection, you might be thinking, this is great, but this should not be happening, and to you I say, yes, yes it should, because when you happen to see the weapon's recoil direction and bloom factors, it makes a ton more sense as to why. For the two test cases that you are seeing right now this very second, the weapon's recoil is colossal while ADSing, and not just between bursts, but between the bullets as well. Doing this via hip fire just the same, the weapon's recoil is so much out of control that I felt like I was watching Pokemon and seeing Team Rocket blasting off again. As much as I enjoy seeing Pikachu's Thunderbolt attack, 
What I don't enjoy is reliving this in slow motion and realizing that the weapon's bloom is atrocious, especially after firing the first couple of bursts. This means to you that you must, and I stress must, control the weapon by pulling down the controller's joystick if you want to land any crits at all and get the weapon's optimal time to kill. It's even more vital if you happen to have any kind of damage buffing perks like multi-kill clip or rampage, because otherwise, you won't ever be proccing those perks, period. Speaking of those perks, many of you are probably wondering as to what kind of perks or perk combinations you should be looking for. So to start things off, let's look at the weapon's perks that I recommend, and you guys can see all those right there on screen. I'll come back to that first column of perks in just a couple of seconds, but for right now, in that second column, we happen to have Akira's Rounds, Steady Rounds, Drop Mag, and Flare Magwell. And between this column is the third, which happens to have Demolitionist, Outlaw, and Underdog, followed by that fourth column of perks to be either Quick Draw, Multi Kill Clip, or Rampage. And seeing that, there are a couple of roles that I want you to be on the hunt for in regards to some wondrous lethality and consistency based roles. Of course, you've already been seeing one role that's just that lethal and consistent and gets your grenade back quite often make enemy guardians a little bit salty. And that role just so happens to be multi-kill clip, demolitionist, drop mag, and extended barrel. But there is a second lethality role that you might be looking for, and you can see that right there on screen. It's got rampage, outlaw, steady rounds, and chamber compensator. And if all possible, probably a stability masterwork. The reason why I want you to have this role so much is because number one, it's going to have a very high lethality factor with Rampage. And number two, you're going to be able to proc that reload speed very, very quickly, especially when getting those crits that's proccing Outlaw in the process. That's then going to allow you to continue to proc Rampage over and over again. And following this, you're then going to have Steady Rounds and Chamber Compensator to increase the weapon's stability stat, making it that much more consistent. If you so choose to do so, you can then add a Counterbalance mod. And once again with Chamber Compensator, that's then going to increase the weapon's overall recoil control to be at over 100, and that's going to have just that vertical up and down recoil 24-7. Now I realize that some of you may not want to have a lethality roll, and instead you want to get your grenade back and you also want to have a consistency based roll. And if that's you, then right there on screen we can see our second roll, and this one just so happens to have Quick Draw Demolitionist, Flare Magwell, and Arrowhead Break. I really, really like this role because number one, it's going to be coming in clutch if you happen to pair it with, say, a sniper, as it's then going to have quick draw, and you can whip this bad boy out no problem and catch that shotgun and rush her off guard, saying adios, bye bye. When downing that little munchkin, you're then going to be able to proc Demolitionist, thus giving you back that grenade much more effectively. And lastly, we then happen to have Flare Magwell and Arrowhead Break. And the reason why I love these two things is because, number one, it's then going to increase the weapon's stability stat, while simultaneously increase the weapon's reload stat, and coupling this all together is increasing the weapon's recoil control by plus 30 via arrowhead break. Regardless of the playstyle that you happen to have, aggressive, passive, or somewhere in between, this breach light definitely has a role for you that's going to fit your playstyle perfectly. But the next thing that we have to ask ourselves is the number one question that we asked at the beginning of this video, and that is, is this the best two-person sidearm in the entire game? I don't know if you knew this or not, but there is actually only three sidearms in the entire game that are two-person sidearms, and this Breach Light, the Smuggler's Word, and the Death by Scorn are those three. Now when we look at the weapon's base stats on Light.gg, you're then going to see that the Breach Light actually has the worst overall base stats in contrast to something like, say, the Smuggler's Word and the Death by Scorn, and though it might be slight in some aspects, it's certainly more significant in others, but just know that the Breach Light definitely is not the best in terms of the base stats. However, base stats are certainly not the only thing that make a weapon quote unquote good or better than the rest, and so what we have to look at next is the weapon's perks and the perk synergy that they might be able to have that some of them might not be able to have when looking at all these perks together. When analyzing the Breach Light and its perks, what you have to understand is that this thing is the only one that can have multi-kill clip or vorpal weapon, demolitionist or underdog, and accurate rounds or drop mag. On the other hand, we got the Smuggler's Ward, and this thing can roll either with Kill Clip or Range Finder or Tap the Trigger or Opening Shot, and simultaneously, it can then have full auto or moving targets and high caliber rounds or ricochet rounds. As far as the Death by Scorn goes, well, this thing is actually the one that has a curator role, and so its role is full auto, Zen Moments, and ricochet rounds. And taking one teeny tiny step back to process all that information that I've just said, what you have to take into account is your personal playstyle and the perks that you're looking for to get that kind of playstyle to work best for you. For me, what I can personally say is that yes, this is the best 2 bursting sidearm in the entire game when it comes to PvP 
again, specifically for me. Does that mean that it's going to be that for you? Maybe yes and maybe not. But let me know your guys' thoughts on this down in the comment section below and what kind of rules that you're looking for in the breach light that's going to make it the best option for you in PvP. Or maybe if you want to get a Smuggler's War instead, that might be something different and it's then going to be the best for you as far as two bracing sidearms go. No matter which end of the spectrum that you happen to fall on, I'm always going to respect your opinions. That is something that I can guarantee. Lastly, be sure to watch the newest, check the latest, and share a comment like on social media because you are the greatest. That's pretty much all I've got for you as of right now, DS Layers. And as always, GG TNT.